Well, <laughs> I'd like to begin by thanking the organizers for the opportunity to speak in this very nice center. It's my first time here. And let's see, there are some polytopes on the board. The actual subject of the talk, which is indeed going to be based around two examples, is a still somewhat mysterious connection between nerve symmetry and motivic cohomology. We <coughs> prefer higher algebraic K theory or algebraic cycles, more concretely, which furnishes in particular an explanation of operi numbers, like polynomials in multiple zeta values, if you like, as the limiting extension data of geometric variation of mixed Hodge structure. Now, they aren't defined that way. They're defined in, some, in terms of limits of some irregular exponential periods. So the talk is going to be centered around these two examples, which will be families of K3 surfaces. And I'm going to try to convince you that uh, these give good evidence for um, this possible connection, this explanation motivically of operi numbers. So uh, again, two families of K3s. So I'm also going to sort of uh, integrate into my explanation of the examples, some more general notation. So let me start by saying phi will always be a rock polynomial with algebraic coefficients in n variables. So n would be 3 in the two examples up there. Delta is always the Newton polytope, in other words, the convex hull of the exponent vectors of the monomials in phi. And P delta is what you get by taking the dual of uh, the polytope, the polar of the polytope, taking a maximal objective triangulation, taking the fan on that thing, and then taking the toric variety. So this includes MPCP desingularization, if you know what that is. And of course, it's a compactification that sort of looks like the polytope of GM to some power. Okay, so I've written the two Laurent polynomials that I'm going to use up there, phi 1 and phi 2, the Newton polytopes are displayed there as well. And given um, one of these phi's, in general, I can construct a family. So I get one, I, I set one equal to t phi of x, and inside, so you know, that's a priori an equation gm to the n cross p1 but I can compactify it in P delta cross P1T. So take this risky closure. And now I take a sequence of blowups along successive proper transforms of the base locus, in other words, where this family meets the toric divisor, which I'll write D delta. That will always be P delta minus GM to the N. So I'm blowing up along components of the intersection of fibers of this thing with that, which are constant. Um, and that gives me P delta tilde cross P1 T. And I take the base change. That gives me some X. That will be called our Landau-Ginsberg model, or compact Landau-Ginsberg model. I'm going to assume that X is smooth, which requires assuming that is smooth as well. Is that, is that well, I mean, pull back. Transform? Transform, yeah. What, 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 the final product. That's what it is. And so this has a projection to P1T. There's a difference between the split transform and the final product. Okay, okay. I, I'm just, right. There is. Okay, so I have my Landau Ginsberg model that I obtain in this way. It's just the proper transform of the mode sequence. And inside this x, I've gone a little too close to the bottom of the board here, I have the fibers xt of phi. And my assumption that is going to turn these into nice Clavii minus 1 folds is that delta needs to be reflexive. So if this is reflexive, then these xt are anti-canonical sections. And so they turn out to be, write this visibly, Calabial 
n minus 1 folds. That, that be inverse image of pi? Inverse image of pi, yes. yes. Of course, sorry. And, right. So there could be i minus 1 folds except over the discriminant locus, which I won't um, discuss right now. So for n equals 3 in particular, these are going to be K3 surfaces, these xt's. And I said something about base loci. The base loci are determined by the restrictions of phi to facets. So I only take the monomials with exponent vectors contained in those facets. And they all take a rather simple form. If you, uh, so there are only six types of facets appearing in these two figures. And the facet polynomials, which determine the base locus, which is not reduced, um, you'll notice. So this is not a, th these phi's are not delta regular, and that's on purpose. Um, anyway, these are the base loci. So the intersections of xt with d delta are fixed. Also, I should say the fiber over 0, x0, is simply some blow up of the toric divisor d delta. So that's very simple. So next, I can talk about a choice of holomorphic form. So omega t is uh, divided by some power of 2 pi i. And then I take the Poincare residue along xt of the form, the wedge of the d logs together of all the xi's, divided by 1 minus t phi of x. And that gives me um, a section of the top Hodge bundle. Um, so this is nowhere vanishing on xt. And this has period, which I'll call a of t. This is supposed to be a conference on periods, so write down a period. Integrate over an invariant cycle about 0. Now the way I construct an invariant cycle is I just I don't so much construct it as say I'm going to take the one whose tube, which is, remember, the adjoint to res, you take the tube around a cycle on xt, uh, whose tube is simply the product of n s1s, that's absolute value of all the xi equal to 1. I still need my 2 pi i, this time to the n d log x, 1 minus t phi. And then you simply expand this as a power series. And by Cauchy's integral formula, you get sum of a, a k t to the k, where the a k are simply the constant terms in the powers of this Laurent polynomial. So in case 1, a k 1, we get the famous a priori sequence, l equals 0 to k k choose l squared, k plus l choose l squared, which is 1, 5, 73, 1445, etc. And for a k2, we get something that I could not find a nicer expression for, sum as i, j, go from 0 to k, with i plus j remaining smaller than or equal to k, of k factorial to k factorial over i factorial squared, j factorial squared, k minus i factorial, k minus k factorial, k minus i factorial. OK, so but when you start writing it out, it looks pretty reasonable. All right, so this, this argument of the power series requires t to be small enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'm only going to be working in the neighborhood of the t equals 0 point, so-called large complex structure limit, for this one parameter model. OK, so now I have the Picard-Fuchs operators. So once I have the AKs, I can say what differential operator of minimal degree annihilates the generator series. And so I write down some differential operator that does that. In the two cases, L1 is delta t cubed. I'm going to write it as a polynomial in t. 2 delta t plus 1. 17 delta t squared plus 17 delta t plus 5 plus t squared delta t plus 1 cubed. And L2 equals delta t cubed minus 2t delta t plus 1 delta t squared plus t plus 3 minus 
4 t squared delta t plus 1, 2 delta t plus 3, delta t plus 2. 2 delta t plus 1, sorry. Okay, so from the um, Riemann schemes of these differential operators, I can now figure out local systems, or at least the local monodromies, over u, which is p1 minus the discriminant locus. So the way this is going to work is rn minus 1 pi lower star z, which will be, default, which will be our hn minus 1 local system. That has a um, complement to the fixed part, right? There's always a fixed part and a variable part inside the local <laughs> system. And if I tensor with O, then that gives me my, uh, you can think of it as a holomorphic sheaf, or you can think of it as a vector bundle, of which that sheaf is the sheaf of sections. It comes with a connection for which that is flat. And altogether, this data gives some variation of Hodge structure. And this guy here, this H with the connection, is isomorphic as a D module to D mod DL. Okay. And I will write for the rank of this R. And as you can see, the rank is 3 in those two cases because the order of the differential operator is 3. Um, now, as I said, from the Riemann scheme of L, we can also deduce the, con the conjugacy classes of the monodromies about each point of sigma. So let me draw these in the two cases. What do we get? So at t equals 0, so sigma 0, sigma 1, and infinity. We get in case 1 and 2, the following monodromies. At 0, there's always a Jordan block of size 3, because that's a, a normal crossing fiber whose polytope has boundary uh, looking like uh, an S2. So that's a Jordan block of rank 3. Then these are all conifold fibers, which means I have a single inversion um, and trivial action on two other cycles. And then finally, at infinity here, I have another Jordan block of rank 3. Whereas at infinity here, what the differential equation tells me is that I have two inversions and one identity. Now, are, are the sigma incongruities the same? We call them sigma in both cases. Um, they're not the same. I'm, it's just okay. I label them sigma okay. not up through sigma. Okay. okay. So this is sufficient information, in fact, to determine the <laughs> limit fixed Hodge structure types. Um, so when I have a variation of Hodge structure that looks like this, well, so the Hodge numbers are 1, 1, and 1 for H2, 0, H1, 1, and H0, 2. So these are P and Q in the sense of H, P, Q. So this is my variation of Hodge structure. Now one type of limit fixed Hodge structure I can have. And I'm going to label my limit fixed Hodge structure at sigma by psi sigma, that's the operator that it's nearby cycles operator, that takes my, when I apply it to this, that is going to be a limit fixed Hodge structure. So the picture at the three maximal unit of monodromy points is this one where the log of the monodromy, which is unipotent in those cases, acts like so. And I'm going to point out that the co-kernel of that monodromy logarithm, or of t minus i, um, is of weight 4, of type 2, 2. Now the other options that we see occurring in here, but they're not the only possibilities, um, when you look at the limit mixed Hodge structure, they have the same Hodge numbers as the original variation, except there is this action by um, the semi-simple, the monodromy in this case is semi-simple. So that's a finite monodromy action that acts by multiplication by negative 1 on here, 
versus multiplication by negative 1 on these two. So that's like, this case versus that case. Um, and let me say in particular, the co-kernel of the action of t minus i in this case has weight 2 instead of 4. I want you to notice the difference between these two cases because those are the monodromies here and here, and these two bullets will play a role later on. Okay, so, you know, what's going on at zero? I can always take a Betty basis and a Hodge basis so that, you know, there's going to be some gamma, gamma prime, gamma double prime, that would be my Betty basis, and the period against omega of these three cycles would be holomorphic, that's A of t, log period, log of t plus something holomorphic, log of t times A of t plus something holomorphic, and log squared of t times A of t plus log of t times something plus something holomorphic. So those are my, that's my Betty basis locally on universal cover of the function disk about zero, and those are what my periods look like. Now, I want to say a bit about mirror symmetry, and let's see, I would probably be ill-advised to cram this in here, so let me just start erasing. I, I, yeah, I mean, no one can see if I run on there, because if I push it up, then it's below the other board. But I don't think you were erasing successfully. <laughs> full technology. The full technology, and this doesn't work. I think that this does work. Yeah. 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 So. so, what about mirror symmetry? I'm not going to go into much detail here, but. The idea is that the mirror of the affine Landau-Ginsberg model, where I remove the fiber um, over zero, and I go to A1 and 1 over T, this is supposed to be, supposed to be, because this is all conjectural, when you get above n equals 3, a Fano infold admitting a toric degeneration to the dual toric fan of variety. Okay? And um, this is conjectural in general, as I said, um, but Paul Hacking uh, has announced a construction where he can take a pair of PLs and circle and an anti-canonical divisor and use scattering diagrams to deform it locally to F together with an anti-canonical hypersurface. So something is going on for n equals 2 and 3, and there's progress. But what is the assertion? Because so far I just said there's some fano. The idea is that you should be able to recover the variation h variable n minus 1 and actually do a bit more in our case. So this would be um, what has been checked for n equals 3 to some extent. You can also obtain operating numbers not visible in H and its limits. Okay, so here is a procedure basically uh, coming from an article of Vasily. Um, that suffices for the present case, though a little bit more generally, one should really define an operary characteristic class by taking some limit of the J function for this torque family n fold. Um, and you can do it that way, but I'm going to keep things simple and just write down an ad hoc version of quantum D module in the case where, you know, I'm going to just assume that the row of F is equal to 1. And we can use genus Girogromov Witten theory of F to construct a quantum product on H star of F. So I take H star of F, tensor it with C T to the plus or minus 1, and construct a connection using Gromov Witten theory. Well, 
I'll use any other variable. I, I actually want to use T, no, but this, uh, okay. this is called the quantity the Fourier transform, the other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. 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 that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Your notational instincts are bad. Um, okay, so what I can do is I can look at the action of this thing on the section 1 tensor 1, and in that way, figure out a quantum differential operator, L hat, that kills that section. That's, that gives me an isomorphism to a more simply presented D module. And let me say just L is, say, some, some beta ij t i delta t the j. And then I can turn this into a recursion, R hat, by replacing, so this has to send 1 tensor 1 to 0. I'm going to replace this by sum of vk q to the k. And then my recursion looks like sum over i of j, beta i j, k minus i of the j, u hat k minus i equals 0. And that has to be true for all k. Um, and now I can take the Fourier Laplace transform that Don was referring to, and I get the differential operator, this actually recovers the differential operator, at least this is part of the mirror symmetry conjecture, it recovers the differential operator for, F, for the, the dual landau ginzburg model. Um, I should say one thing. If I took phi to be completely generic, delta regular and all that, the mirror would be this. It's by taking phi special that I get a more general phano infold admitting a torrent degeneration to p-delta circle. Okay? So Fourier Laplace transform gives me regular Picard Fuchs equation and recursion and replaces uk hat by uk's k factorial times uk hat. And this recovers my ak in both cases with the normalization ak equals 1, blah, blah, blah. And in the two cases, in general, for the card rank 1, fan of 3 folds, what you will find is that there's a second solution to the recursion, bk equals 0, 1, dot, 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 both with values in q. Okay? And then I can take the limit. The limit as k goes to infinity of bk over ak, or bk hat over ak hat if you prefer, gives some alpha f. And this is our operating number. Okay, so for future reference, let me actually write on this board what the Fano's in the two cases are. So Fano 1 is the so called V12. This is some notation. Sorry, look out. Is BK hat just defined as BK over? It, yeah, exactly, exactly. So you're not, because there are two things. You both take the second solution of the other recursion. That's yeah, not the same. Okay. So Maybe you take okay. the second solution of the original up here, B. Okay, then. So the hats are. Forget the hats. Forget the hats. Because the line you both can write on the other Yeah, otherwise, yeah. if what you're saying is true, it would be wrong. Okay, so now I take V12, which is by definition the orthogonal Grassmannian 510 intersected with. Seven hyperplane sections. So that's something 10 dimensional. Cut it down to dimension 3. And over here, I have F2, which is V10, which is G25, intersect a quadric, intersect two planes. It turns out that this is rational and this is irrational. And these two examples come from. Vasily's article in 2009 called The Resonating a Tape Period. So, um, in a less ad hoc sense, one could start with these Fano varieties, and there's a way to compute their operating constants, and then there's a quantum Lefschetz theorem that says that the operating constants are preserved under taking successive hyperplane sections. The only problem is the successive hyperplane sections eventually kill one of your primitive classes that you need to construct the Opry number. And so it's a little, little more non-canonical to do it for the threefold. And you have to use almost solutions of the differential 
equation rather than a pair of solutions, of x solutions to the differential equation. So that's why I did the ad hoc method. It's simple. Um, OK. So what are the two operating numbers in these two cases? Alpha 1 is equal to 1 sixth zeta of 3. This is, of course, behind the famous operating irrationality proof. And in this case, alpha 2 is 1 tenth zeta of 2. And from the fact that, for instance, in Kwasili's article, this is related to modular forms, or in old work of Boinkers, going back to the late 70s, this is also related to modular forms, special value of an Eichler integral of some modular form, uh, wait for Eisenstein series, in fact. The question is, can we expect this is motivated by an algebraic cycle in some sense? That seems promising because of the connection to things that are sort of motivic -y. On the other hand, Vasily's article um, uses deresonation off um, the motivic setting and the many to derive comparison to compute this and uses some sign formula that he proves, and there's no evidence that it's motivic. What I want to convince you now, as evidence for uh, my proposed connection, is that they're both motivic. May I first ask a question? Yeah. So what about this toric degeneration mm -hmm. in relation to the fire? The toric degeneration in relation to the fire. fire. Well, if I, if I want the mirror of the toric degeneration, <laughs> then I would have to uh, I, I would have to replace that by a generic phi. That's the point. So specializing phi corresponds to detoric degenerating in some sense. So you have a bunch of phantoms that torically degenerate to P delta circle, and those correspond to the many ways you can specialize essentially the base locus from the generic, right? The generic base locus here would be some elliptic curve but I've specialized it to a pair of non-reduced P1s, right? So that's supposed to relate to the choice of family. And uh, what hacking shows, actually, in any extreme case, is that it's sufficient to care only, to remember only, the base locus um, to determine what happens. So now, I'm going to switch to constructing algebraic cycles, and uh, these algebraic cycles are, if you were at Spencer Block's talk last week, of the sort of second sort he discussed, motivating extensions of mixed Hodge structure, in other words, higher cycles, um, which go by various names, like block higher chow cycles, or Motivic cohomology classes or higher algebra K theory, which are all the same in the smooth quasi projective case. Um, I forgot to <coughs> drive a car. All right, so now pair of higher normal functions. All right, what is a higher normal function? I'm going to use the abbreviation H and F. A higher normal function on U equals P1 minus a bunch of points. Sigma is equivalently one of these two things. So the first definition would be a variation of mixed Hodge structure, V, which can be exhibited as an extension of a Z of zero by something of pure weight. So this is pure weight, let's say minus R minus one, or just let's do, do maybe minus R for R bigger than one. I want it to be higher, a usual normal function would be if that had weight minus 1. Or 
a holomorphic horizontal section uh, mu of j of h. This is not unrelated to what we heard in the last talk. Equals h over f not h uh, plus the local system underlying it. Um, so this is just generalized and general non-compact intermediate Jacobians. That's what you should think. And horizontal means that nabla of a lift of mu, either locally or on the universal cover, is contained in f negative one of h. Um, and the way you go from the first definition to the second dimension, de definition is you're going to take one and then take two lifts locally. Let's call them uh, nu f and nu q or nu z. And then I'm going to uh, set i of nu tilde Okay, if this is i, equals nu q minus nu f. Okay, what this means is since their difference goes to zero, that difference comes from something. Okay, and that, that something is a local section of h, and then I quotient by the ambiguities in the construction, which are in here for nu f, which has to be an f naught of v, and in here, for nu, I really should have said z, if I want to do it this way. Um, and when you think of monodromy of one of these higher normal functions as a section of here, then this is responsible for the monodromy. Whereas this is responsible, this is flat, of course, so this is responsible for the action of the gauss monian connection and whether the thing is horizontal. So, this is very simple. In general, you know, to do anything, you need to impose a further condition called admissibility, which is not so simple, and I'm not going to say anything about. I'm just going to, I'm just going to say that um, this technical condition, which has to be imposed on one or two in neighborhoods of each of the functures, um, which is due to Kashiwara, it says that uq and uf behave well at points of sigma in a way that generalizes Poincaré's extend of the, uh, Poincaré introduced normal functions for families of Jacobians of curves, and he introduced the notion of extendability of normal functions, and admissibility is really just a higher substitute for that. Um, but what does admissibility give us? It gives us, you know, things like the theorem of the fixed part for admissible variations of mixed Hodge structure. Presently, it gives us that limit mixed Hodge structures of V exist. And so I have a hope to compute limits of normal functions in the case where the normal function does not have a singularity at a point of sigma. Um, so that's the first thing. And then in sigma nu q equals zero, which is the condition, which is a condition for a, you know, the condition that has to be satisfied by some Q lift in order for the normal function not to be singular at sigma, and uh, therefore for a limit to be computable. So I can compute the limit at sigma of mu, and that lives in the Jacobian of the limit mixed Hodge structure psi sigma of h, and then you take the T sigma invariant part, which actually is a sub mixed Hodge structure. So I'm going to assume this. You can't assume it everywhere, the normal function will be trivial. But you assume it except at sigma equals infinity, which is a weird choice. A less weird choice would be sigma equals 0. But then I'd always get one kind of normal function, and I don't want to do that. Go with that. I'd always get one kind of normal function mm -hmm. corresponding to kn, and I don't want to do that. Sigma corresponds to t, not one of the t. Sigma corresponds to t. That's correct. Mm -hmm. so this is not the original. OK. So now I, I want to discuss the idea of a truncated higher normal function. OK. This is like in Eve's talk. 
a non-canonical contraction, if you will. I take locally a lift, or on the universal cover, in other words, a section of this, and I'm going to contract it with the class of my hallmark n form, the one that I wrote down before, and I'm going to call that v of t. Now that gives me for each t a number. And that number then furnishes a function. Now, I could say in O of the universal cover, what I instead want to do is be tricky and say O of some disk corresponding to some point, um, neither zero nor infinity, in the discriminant locus. Okay? So, the fact that L kills this holomorphic form implies I mean, what are the ambiguities in this? The ambiguities in this are by that. Because contracting an element of F not H against omega gives zero. So the ambiguities are actually periods of omega. To get rid of the ambiguities and to get it from a function well defined in the universal cover to a function well defined downstairs, it's sufficient to apply L. So LV is actually well defined. It's just a function with nice meromorphic singularity. So it's really just an element of C of T. And it's even better than that because I have assumed that there are no singularities except at sigma equals infinity. And you can deduce from that, I mean, this requires some work, that uh, this is a polynomial. And if that polynomial is non-zero, then I know that this is not a Q period, and so I know that my original higher normal function was non-torsion as a section of this. Just to relate to Steve's talk a little bit. Now I'm going to normalize in a way that will make the truncated higher normal function unique. So I do two things. I replace the lift mu tilde by a local section of the local system, the Q local system. And this is going to um, maximize. I do this in a way so as to maximize the radius of this disk. And then I'm going to multiply by a constant um, so that g takes the form t to some power times minus 1 plus blah, blah, blah. OK? It's pretty easy to see that uh, the constant term of g is in there. So. Um, so in the two examples, we have sigma hat equals sigma 1. Remember, the, the picture was 0, sigma 0, sigma 1, infinity in t. So in other words, this higher normal function has the big radius of convergence. Um, and g is just a constant times t. In other words, I normalize so that I have g equals minus t. Finally, a geometric normal function. Let me just the original one up in the Hmm? So this is essentially a function of the use. Or the purpose used to mm -hmm. get set free. Mm -hmm. I'm about to show you that. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Um, okay, so geometric cardinal <coughs> are always admissible. That's a theorem. Going back to smooth break and Zucker. Um, so if I have a smooth proper map from x u to u and higher chow cycle in the block higher chow group, x r minus 1. So remember these are cycles on x cross box to the r minus 1, where box is p1 minus 1. Um, then I can restrict from x to the fiber xt and then use the fact that since, well, this was quasi-projective. This is projective, though, and uh, the Hodge classes of such things vanish. So this goes straight into the intermediate the generalized intermediate Jacobian, twisted by t, and thereby doing this for every t, I actually get an invisible normal function. So 
So this is the Abel Jacobi or regulator, Z or Q regulator map. Um, and we have admissible normal functions with coefficients in H2P minus R twisted by P. Okay, and how do I compute this thing? Well, mu Z, the corresponding normal function, as a section of this bundle, is going to be obtained by starting with some currents, which one can write down, explicit R minus 2 currents in this case, on box to the R minus 1, apply ZT as a correspondence to them to push it down to XT. You can show that these currents allow you to do that. Um, that's not in general something you can do with currents. Um, and then you add some corrective uh, current of integration, the momentum powers of 2 pi i, of course, um, such that the boundary of gamma is what I get if I apply this correspondence to the negative reals to the r minus 1. So it's complicated, but at least you can write it down. I don't want to go into much detail except in the examples. For n equals 3, there are two possibilities that don't yield something rigid as a higher normal function, so that they can actually occur here. Chow 2 of x1 and chow 3 of x3. So this is going to correspond to k1 of your family of k3s. This corresponds to k3 of the k3s. Okay. So guess which comes first? So the k3 of the k3 is what corresponds to example 1. Okay, so example one, let's be brief, z star I take to be the graph of x1, x2, x3 over gm cubed. <laughs> Nothing to be simpler, it's essentially the diagonal restricted to gm cubed cross box cubed. Um, but this sits inside x, and if phi is tempered, which is a notion that for n equals 2 goes back to Fernando Rodriguez Viegas, and which Chuck Duran and I generalized in a paper we wrote in 2011, this extends to z in x minus x naught cross box 3. Now, of course, that's the wrong thing to remove. We want a normal function with singularities at x infinity. So now I need to pull back of z under an explicit birational transformation of the total space of the family. So that gives me x3 over x3 plus 1, 1 plus x1, 1 plus x2, over 1 plus x1 plus x2 plus x1, x2 plus x1, x2, x3, comma x1 over x1 plus 1, 1 over t. And now, the corresponding cycle, z, belongs to child 3 of x minus x infinity, comma 3, tensor t. That's my cycle. And now, I'll just summarize the computation of the higher normal function. So we need to pair mu z with omega t. Um, by doing a bit of fancy footwork with this pullback, I can convert this into the following form. Integral over xt inverse of this current wedge omega. Now that's not too hard to see. But now I want to present this omega as d of d log x, this is omega t inverse, over t minus v. And uh, now I can use integration by parts for currents to move the d over to here. So I get d on, on the r current, the regulator current, wedge d log x over t minus v. And this d on r gives me a bunch of junk I don't want, so d log of x plus um, you know, some residue terms. And then the crucial term is delta um, r minus to the cross 3. 
Okay, so now I'm going to change all the signs of x, y, and z and replace phi by phi tilde, which is just where I do that inside phi. Um, and then I change variables uh, to, well, I don't want to do that yet. Okay, so what does this give me first of all? I do a power series expansion of that in t over phi tilde, and I get minus <coughs> the sum t to the k, k greater than or equal to zero, d log x over phi to the k plus one, which lo and behold, when I replace all the xi by xi over, let's see, backwards, xi equals xi over one plus xi, Right, so I do that replacement, and I get sum k greater than or equal to zero, t to the k, integral over zero <laughs> one cubed. The people who like Akari will recognize this formula. <laughs> Product xi to the k, one minus xi to the k dxi over one minus x3, one minus x1, x2, to the k plus one. Bingo. That's the operi, uh, that's an expression that comes up in already Boyker's 1979 work. And what do we get when we compute these beautiful rational integrals? We get minus 2 zeta to 3 plus 12 minus 10 zeta to 3 times t plus dot dot dot. And now we normalize. See, if I apply the Picard Fuchs operator L to this, what do I get? you get 12t. I want to have uh, minus t here, so I need to divide by minus 12. And so when I normalize this, I get 1 sixth zeta to 3 plus minus 1 plus 10 zeta to uh, 5 sixth zeta to 3 t plus dot dot dot. And lo and behold, there is v of zero. That's the value of the higher normal function at zero. And I did it all without modular forms. And you know why I want to do it without modular forms? Because I want to be able to do this for families of Kolobian threefolds occurring in toric hypersurfaces, and fourfolds, and fivefolds, and so on and so forth. None of those families are ever modular. So we need a technique that is going to allow us to do these things motivically without modular forms. And this is one approach. So let me say what happens in example two. Is this v the Mahler measure? Uh, it's not the Mahler measure. The higher normal function is not the Mahler measure. There are two. There, are, I'll say. I'll since I'm running out of, running short on time a bit, maybe I should say this now. There are two ways of looking at the mixed times theoretic extension you get. One is that, and one is its dual. You flip it upside down. This is the extension that gives the Mahler measure, or the regulator. The dual is the extension that gives the higher normal function, which is this. That's the key point. Put differently, it's, a, it's an integral in T of an Eisenstein series versus an Eiffel integral of an Eisenstein series, which is the thing you want to do, which is this. OK, let me say something about the second example, and then just a few remarks about how this can all be generalized. Okay, so example two. So as above, I invert all the coordinates additively and I replace phi by phi tilde. Okay, now look at the picture up there. Look at the bottom of the polytope and the base locus in the bottom of the polytope. I have three rational curves there. I want to put on xt intersect um, x3 equals zero. Right, which is 1 plus x1, um, 1 plus x2, 1 plus x1 plus x2 equals 0, a triple of functions so as to get a k1 class. A k1 class can be thought of as an empty rational equivalence. In other words, some functions on curves such that when I push forward their divisors, I get 0. Okay? So what I do is 
I simply write down such functions, right? I'm not going to write this out ad nauseum. But you want to have a function that has pole here and zero here, pole here and zero here, and pole here and zero here, so they cancel. And so this will work on the whole family because I've done it in the base locus. It doesn't work at one point. T equals infinity. And the reason is, in constructing curly x, there are some blow-ups that happen in the total space, which cause this to sort of come unhinged at infinity, and causes the total family of cycles to have a residue along x infinity. So that's good, because otherwise this would definitely be a trivial class. Um, so now what I do is I draw the membrane, gamma of t inside xt, that bounds on this. Well, it technically has to bound on the negative real locus, uh, each of the functions I put on there. Um, but for t sufficiently small, I can take gamma t to be just those x1, x2, and x3, such that x1, x2 is in what I'll call mu, and x3 is x3 of x1, x2. Now mu is going to be simply the locus where 0 is less than x2 is less than 1, and uh, 1 minus x2 is less than x1 is less than 1. And so then my higher normal function, v of t, is the integral over gamma t of omega t. It's pretty easy to see. And that is d log of x over 1 minus t phi tilde on mu cross s1 epsilon in x3, a little tube around it. And when you expand that in power series, you get t to the k integral over mu of phi tilde to the k. And now you take the constant term in x3, still a function of x1 and x2, d log x1 wedge d log x2. These are, again, some very explicit rational integrals that you can work out. And what do we get? We get um, zeta of 2 plus t times minus 10 plus 6 zeta of 2 plus dot, dot, dot. You apply L to v, you get 10, minus 10t. 10 and so now I have to divide by 10 to normalize it. And that gives me v of t is 1 tenth zeta 2 plus minus 1 plus uh, 3 fifths zeta 2t plus blah, blah, blah. All right, and once again, we see that this nails the operator. OK, so both operator constants have been recovered as special values of geometric higher normal functions. And you can, one way to think of this is to say that I can write down some bk t to the k, the other solution of the operator recurrence. I'll leave this a little bit mysterious because I want to get to one last point. This is equal to a of t times v of 0 minus v of t. Okay? The point is that v of t and a of t have small radius of convergence, and uh, v of t has a large radius of convergence due to properties of the cycles. And so it follows automatically that v of 0 is the limit of vk over ak. And so that's another way of seeing the operator. What are the general principles, though? How do I expect this to generalize? Um, well, just a couple minutes. All right, so to conclude, I give you a motive for your motive. The Akari motive. So for any sigma in sigma, I define phantom of sigma to be the kernel of Hn x sigma goes to the limit mixed Hodge structure. Hn, 
Um, and for a subset, I will just take phantom sigma prime to be the direct sum of the phantom sigmas in that subset. And then I set a phi to be hn of x minus x infinity relative x naught divided by phantom sigma star. Sigma star is sigma minus zero infinity. All right? And then what you can show is that a phi sits as an extension of ih1 a1 of the variable part of the variation and psi naught h n minus 1 nu t naught invariance. So that's something variable. This is something actually constant. And this is an extension of the t infinity co invariance of so the limit mixed Hodge structure um, at infinity. Forgot to twist here by I H one of P one H N minus one V. That's pure of weight N, and we call the local system extremal or phi extremal if that's gone, if that goes away. And so then, a phi is simply the extension of the t naught invariance in the limit mixed Hodge structure at zero by the minus one twist of the t infinity co invariance of the limit mixed Hodge structure at infinity. And now, whether or not that happens, I mean, one problem is that this is the principle of structure to doing this, is that given any embedding of a taint object into here, I can pull back my extension. So if this is mu, I have mu upper star a phi is an extension of q of minus a by this psi naught thing. Um, and in the, in the case where not just extremality holds, um, which holds in the two cases for sure, uh, which it's an easy condition to check if you know the limit of x odd structures. If extremality holds and phi is tempered, then in fact, it's even better. There's a splitting off of a Q of zero from here. And so, just to write some statement that has some semblance of theorem in it. If phi is tempered and extremal, then um, I can define alpha mu to be the extension we get by taking mu upper star of epsilon lower star of a phi. That's an extension of q of minus a. This lives in x1 mixed Hodge structure, q of minus a by q of 0, which is c mod q of a. That's great for zeta of 3, but it's terrible for zeta of 2, because that would kill zeta of 2. So the last page of my, last half page of my notes, which I'm going to skip now because I'm out of time, basically, it, it, the point is you prove that if I now let this vary, and I look at the corresponding extension of variations of mixed Hodge structure, then the mu upper star of that recovers my higher normal functions. And the limit at zero of that variation of mixed Hodge structure has t naught invariance that. So the point is, that says that this is the special value of the higher normal function in the sense, so associated to each view, there's a higher normal function. According to Valence and Hodge conjecture, it should be motivic. It actually, the conjecture actually says that. And this 
is an element of C, remember it's well defined, and under the projection here, it goes to alpha. Thank you. summer. Yes. And the conditions are very complicated. Um, I wanted the conditions all to be qualitative, uh, except for the one thing about <coughs> the, the sort of the cross ratio of points to base blocks being very big. Right? So there's that condition and um, then you know you can get everything you want to have about the differential equation. Um, you can get everything you want about the differential equation and on the homogeneous equation and the fact that the higher child cycle normal function solves it and so forth. You can get all of that from general principles and with very qualitative assumptions. But the, the key point there is what I'm always doing is I'm removing the fiber at zero and I'm looking at the Km class. So there's always a Q of minus n in, um, in this guy if I swap the place of 0 and infinity. Right? So in case 1, uh, it's all egal, right? I mean, it doesn't matter because the thing has an involution. Right? In case 2, I could have swapped the places of zero infinity and gotten a K3 class and taken the normal function coming from that K3 of the K3 from V10. But the limit of that is actually zero. You get nothing. And so we, we thought, okay, you can't get the one-tenth of zeta of two typically. It turns out you have to do this non-canonical thing and remove the fiber of infinity to get that. So the sort of the interplay between the two things is that the irrationality proofs, at least so far, the only way I know how to get them is from Km cycles that come from removing the fiber over zero. Whereas this business seems to relate to removing the fiber over infinity. The other thing is removing fiber over zero is it makes sense in the context of mirror symmetry. Right? The mixed Hodge structure you get if you flip the places of these is essentially the graded, the graded pieces match up with the graded pieces of the quantum cohomology mixed Hodge structure of the family. Right? So uh, you know, it, it, there's still some mystery here. That's what I'm trying to say. And I, I hope to get more irrationality proofs, but so far it just explains how to read. Well, um, you said you, you want to do it this way, with not using model forms, but in principle, you know, yeah. higher dimensional collateral yeah. yeah. Have there any examples where you know? In particular here, if you weren't in K1 or in some higher K, mm -hmm. K group of potential, you would presumably get something that gives you some combination of polynomials uh, in something in some block group or some higher block group. Do you have any example like that? So say the three from that point of view is your kind of some boring number. So, so you mean multiples of No, no, I don't mean that. No, 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 not to say about as far as I know, not to do with block groups at all. Right. No, that's no, not going to be a simple I extension. Say, no, no, you you said I didn't say multiple set. I said block, block, group, block groups. So, so I don't so have an example that I've worked out for Columbia so three balls and not multiples. Uh, but yeah, I expect to do that. And, yeah. no, do you have an example where you expect something not well? I mean, there are a bunch of examples in, of operating numbers in a very nice preprint by Sergey Golkin, um, and I think the first thing to try would be to aim at sections of the Spano varieties that have a pair of operative constants, like zeta, there's a multiple of zeta of nine, some multiple of zeta of five, or something like that. I see no reason why this, this won't get that. Uh, I, I, think, I think this will get those sections. Should it still say that? Yeah, it would still be zeta. Now he's asking about non-trivial elements of mm. interesting elements of block book, so not to be zeta. Um, well, like you can't make with something that's not. Oh, like a root of unity or something. No. Well, then, that's not. 
Yeah, you know, dialogue with arbitrary numbers in every way. I think it's a block group. The block group is not arbitrary numbers. Yeah. Sums x raised from minus x. Yeah, so yeah. It's not just roots of unity. Yeah, I mean, you can write these things in that, in that way. But you know an example where you get such a, where you get non trivial. You've only given us two examples, yeah. and they both gave us a bit of n. So I'm asking if you have examples where you get non trivial elements of the block group. There's an example where you can get the catalog across. That's, that's a non trivial element of the block group. I Other questions? Just a quick one. Can you say something about the geometry of the K3 surfaces appearing in your uh, examples? For example, are they elliptically fibered or are yes. the yes. numbers bounded from below? Yes. That's the, that's the fastest way to see that they're Picard rank 19. They're elliptically fibered. They all have a toric elliptic vibration. Okay. All the examples that so far come up. Yeah. So the Picard number is 19. 19. Okay. So they're actually products of elliptic curves and commercial. I can do it that way, but as I said, I want to avoid the, yeah, okay. the, the modular approach. And, you know. yeah. Actually, I mean, the V10, the V10 corresponds in some sense to some kind of pullback, push forward of a symmetric square of the Ockerese and the two family elliptic curves. So, I mean, that's in there somewhere, but it's more complicated to do it this than to do it with some other thing. Okay, and we thank Matt again.